Unfortunately, all the swords called ninja swords that exist today were made in the Meiji era after there were no more ninja. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. When you imagine a katana, the Japanese sword, you would probably imagine a samurai wielding it. However, there is one more famous icon that seems to have used the katana too. They are the ninja. But when you take a look at the katana held by the samurai and ninja, you can understand that they have different figures and are carried differently too. But how are they actually different? So today, as a Japanese katana sword trainee, I will explain the three main differences between the samurai katana and ninja swords. At the end of the video, I will introduce an interesting theory about the ninja swords that might go against all of today's story. And before I start, please understand that because ninjas were spies in the past, there is not too much concrete historical evidence about them. Looks like they've completed their jobs pretty neatly. So what I'm going to be talking about today is just one theory. And even if you get confused somewhere during the middle, that's okay. I will wrap everything up again at the end of the video in today's conclusion. One, different types of katana. Let's start from the first difference by taking a look at what kind of katana the samurai and ninja each used. The samurai, as I've explained in this video, used seven different katanas throughout Japanese history. They were Chokuto, Tachi, Naginata, Tanto, Uchikatana, Wakizashi, and Yari. There are so many different types of katana because the history of samurai itself is very long. As the way they fought in battle changed from individual combat to groups fighting in war, their weapons changed accordingly. There are many different theories, but the ninja are said to have used different types of katana too. The straight sword they would carry on their back is surely the main type of katana they would probably imagine a ninja using. However, they also used something called a shikomi katana. This is a kind of secret weapon, often in the form of a cane or fan. These katanas were used for missions in places where Japanese swords cannot be brought in, or for performing missions disguised as a person who does not carry Japanese swords around on a daily basis. The ninja used other weapons too, like shuriken, kunai, and kusarigama. But strictly speaking, they are not regarded as katana. So I'll omit these for now, and possibly talk about them in another video. 2. Different form To talk about this topic, we will be comparing the basic uchi katana as the samurai katana and the ninja swords that are carried on ninja's back. There are mainly three differences in form. One, the curve. Two, the length. Three, the spa and saya. One, the curve. As you might have noticed from seeing ninja swords in anime and manga, the first and most obvious difference is whether they're curved or not. Why not curve the ninja swords too? The curves of the katana are meant for a stronger slash when it's swung. In order to cut something with the sword, you must either push or pull the blade. Otherwise, you would rather be smashing if you simply swing the blade straight down. The curve automatically makes the swing draw an arc, making it much easier to slash something. However, there is a defect to this too. It makes it difficult to stab something with it. So this means that the samurai katana were meant for slashing, and the ninja swords were meant for 
Stabbing. If the ninja were ever to use their swords to attack someone, the expected situation is to stab the enemy from somewhere hidden, perhaps from under the floor. They would hardly have any occasions of swinging their swords to slash someone like these samurai did. That would make them stand out too much. We will be talking more about the usage of each sword in the next chapter. 2. The length. The length of the ninja swords was about 40 centimeters. The basic uchikatana was about 70 centimeters average. So the ninja swords was about the length of the subsword wakizashi. That is in between the length of 30 to 60 centimeters. The short length and also the straight form was both to avoid hitting and catching obstacles such as trees and walls when running. 3. The tsuba and saya. The tsuba is this ring between the blade and the handle. It was meant for protecting the hand holding the handle in a fight and balancing the weight of the blade and the handle. The saya is the sheath or scabbard of the katana. While these items of the samurai katana are considered as art that have different shapes and beautiful colors, the ones of the ninja swords are usually pure black and matted. This is to avoid these parts of the sword to reflect light and stand out to the enemies. Also, the tsuba of the ninja swords are slightly larger than that of a samurai katana, and the end of the saya is pointed too. The reasons why, I'll explain in the next chapter. 3. Different usage Finally, let's take a look at the different usages of each katana. To make long stories short, the katana of samurai was meant to be used as a weapon in battle, or as a symbol to show that they are a noble warrior. The katana of ninja, on the other hand, was more of a convenient tool for them to carry around on their missions as spies. The katana of samurai was called the soul of the samurai. This was because katana were originally thought of as an item to be dedicated to God and where the gods would reside. This is why even today, there's always a small shrine placed inside the workshop of a katana swordsmith and a katana placed inside the inner sanctuaries of some shrines. Although the katana was used in battle once in a while, the samurai's main weapons were long-range weapons, like the naginata, spear, and bows and arrows. This is why many old katana are still left today in such beautiful shape. Especially in the Edo period, only samurai were allowed to carry two swords at the same time, the uchikatana and wakizashi. This was a policy made by the government to make it easier to identify who belongs to which class instantly in order to avoid crime. Also, by creating an image that holding a katana is a privilege, they tried to keep the samurai who are in the top class of society humble and always have their responsibilities in mind. It's just like how a judo or karate training with a black belt around his or her waist might feel that they should act as role models for the beginners. The katana that ninja used did not have spiritual meanings like the ones of samurai. They were more of a practical tool used in various situations for them to successfully accomplish their missions as spies. Let me give you just a few examples of how they were used. 1. A stepladder. 2. A snorkel. 3. An accessory case. In order to climb over high walls, they sometimes used the katana as a stepladder. They would lean the katana against the wall, step on the tsuba as a scaffold, and after climbing up, they used the long sageo string to recover the katana. This explains why the tsuba was bigger and the saya was pointy compared to the samurai katana. It would be easier for the ninja to step on 
and the pointed saya will stick into the ground deeper to be more stable. Next, the pointy end of the saya was removable, so it can be used as a snorkel to hide underwater. However, many people doubt if something like that is possible with a human's vital capacity. The saya is thick to sheath the katana, and it is quite long. Maybe trained ninja made it possible. I wouldn't recommend you trying though. Also, they would keep things like medicine in case of injuries or illnesses inside the removal edge and use it as a small accessory case. So I believe that you now understand how different the idea of a samurai katana and ninja swords were. The samurai katana was thought of as something sacred. Even today, katana trainees like us are taught we must never step over a katana laid on the floor, use it like a cane, and must always bow to it before and after training. I would probably faint if I actually saw someone using it as a stepladder. So for the ninja, the katana was just one of the tools they used to survive, and there was no other meaning than that. Then lastly, let's talk about a theory that will turn today's story all over. Ninja swords didn't exist. Then Shogo, what the heck have you been talking about today? This theory is supported by some people because of these two reasons. One, there are hardly any documents about the ninja swords. Two, the ones that exist today were just made for display. First of all, again, the ninjas were spies. So there aren't too many historical records of them left in the first place, especially on the ninja swords. On the other hand, there are documents left of famous ninja clans like Iga and Koga, who used the samurai katana instead. Then what about the ninja swords that are on display at some of the museums in Japan? Unfortunately, all the swords called ninja swords that exist today were made in the Meiji era after there were no more ninja. They were created for the purpose of this place at tourist facilities. So the ninja swords might be a mere imaginary weapon born during the creation of virtual images of ninja like anime and manga. What are your thoughts about this? I think that the ninja swords could have existed because all the methods that are said to have been used are too precise and concrete to be fake. Maybe not every ninja held these katana, but there should have been some who did. Let's hope they did, because ninja swords are simply really cool. And lastly, today's conclusion. I explained about the three main differences between samurai katana and ninja swords. One, different types of katana. The samurai used seven different types of katana depending on the battle style of that era. The ninja used the ninja swords that we all imagine, and also the hidden weapon, shikomi katana. Two, different form. The ninja swords are less curved compared to the samurai katana because it was meant to stab rather than slash. Also, the length was shorter to avoid hitting or catching obstacles such as trees and walls when running. The spa and saya were all black and matted to avoid them reflecting light and standing out to the enemies. 3. Different Usage While the samurai katana was called the samurai soul and was thought of as something sacred, the ninja swords was a mere item that the ninja used to accomplish their missions. They used the sword as stepladders to climb walls, and saya as snorkels, and the removable tip of the saya as accessory cases and such. However, some theories say that ninja swords might not have existed in the first place, because there is hardly any evidence left to prove that they did, and the ninja swords that existed today on display were all made for tourism purposes. So that's it for today, thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards the culture and history of katana, please hit the like button to let me know. And my goal is to achieve 100,000 subscribers by January 2022, so your help would mean a lot. 
In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So, learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Dowo, arigatou gozaimashita! Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching this video, and welcome to the Omake Talk. So recently, I've been making quite a lot of videos, you know, comparing the culture and history of samurai and ninja. And as you may know, um, I used to work at a facility called Kyoto Samurai Experience, where um, travelers from foreign countries can um, wield a real Japanese sword and try out Zen meditation and stuff. And so because I used to work there, I studied quite a lot about the samurai history and culture in the past. But about the ninja, I of course read probably about three or four books about them before I started YouTube too, but I didn't have, like have like any, what should I say, like practical experience like like the like compared to the samurai and the swords. But um, anyways, I've been really uh, finding it interesting, you know, about the ninja. I've watched a lot of anime, as you have probably, yeah, like Naruto and all the other mangas anime before, but I really haven't like gotten really deeply into the history and culture before, so I'm really having a lot of fun making these videos and studying about them. And there I found out something really, really terrible recently. Yes, um, it is. Um, when I was looking up ninja katana on the internet, there is there are some um, katana shops in Kyoto with, where they sell the yaito, which is the yai katana. So it's the it's a katana that's not real, so it's not it's, you can't cut anything with it. But it's a katana that you can, you can use um, for swinging, not like the the mozoto or the bijutsuto, which are just for art and you shouldn't swing it because it's very easy to break. Yaito are made really strong, so you can actually swing them. And when you when I saw the the online shops of some of these stores, there are some places that were selling the ninja katanas with or the kind of the replica ones, but the ones that you can actually swing around, and it's safe to do that. And I was like. Oh no, because <laughs> you know, I already have like, uh, I think I have four katanas inside my house and when you start collecting them, it's gonna be really, really bad. So I'm like, oh no, I noticed something that I shouldn't have, you know, uh, but actually at some point, I'm probably, definitely actually going to be buying one of these katanas. I actually even found the, the, um, the nodachi, you know, the really, really long tachis, the old tachi, you know, the Yaito version of it as well. So I'm like, okay, I'm definitely gonna have to buy this someday. <laughs> But they are really, really, really expensive. So, you know, I have the new baby, I have a family to take care of. So I'm going to be you know, talking with my wife and deciding when to buy it. But I hope you can look forward to it. I'm pretty, pretty sure I'm going to be um, putting more katana into my collections. All right, I hope you can look forward to that. Then once again, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. And let me know about your comments about the swords that I introduced today. Goodbye.